Hey guys, I'm Annie, or also known as Annie Fuchsia, and I'm here today to present to you a developer interview for MOP Remix. Unfortunately, due to some technical difficulties, I couldn't get the clean footage of the beginning of the interview, so here we are presenting the interview like this. I had the privilege of sitting down with Brian Dowling, Senior Game Designer, and CG Bamrick, Senior Test Analyst, and we got the chance to talk about MOP Remix. Without further ado, let's hop into the interview itself with the first question being, why Mists of Pandaria? And Mists of Pandaria, also, it might have been 10 years since players have been back to Pandaria. Of course, you could you know, level through uh, Chromie time or maybe it's new time walking, but for a lot of players, they're not going to have seen, especially the patch content, in many years. And so the fact that there is um, that content people haven't seen for a while, and there's kind of a huge diversity of content, there's some of the most legendary raids that the game has ever had, like Heroic Lei Shen, is just like ingrained into the player memory. But also there's, you know, daily content that is different from World Quest. It kind of has a different vibe and a different flavor. Um, and then we have the scenarios that are, like we do a little bit of scenario stuff, but nothing like the, you know, three person scenarios from Mr. Pandaria. And so we were looking at, okay, what would be a, a good mix with the features that we're adding for WoW Remix? And like, what do we think fans are really going to like? And that's how we landed on Mr. Pandaria. Yeah, and we really did a, a really um, cool thing where we bridged the stories together, where we've introduced some of the infinite dragon flight into the intro and, and into these little bizarre locations that are um, placed around the Pandaria map. Um, and so it's really cool because uh, Pandaria has all this like beautiful landscape. And so it's a really nice experience to just uh, be able to drag and ride over that. Um, and there's like little collectibles. You can collect bronze while you're flying through the currency for the uh, remix event. Um, so it's just a really cool experience flying through Pandaria in that way and getting to experience it with like a little bit of a dragonflight twist. Cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Mist of Pandaria was actually the first expansion where I started streaming and making content. So it's a, it's a really nice start. It's a really nice like picking point of an expansion for me as well for that reason. As a follow-up, could time running become something that we might see with other expansions in the future? So nothing to announce about any kind of future remixes, but uh, we're, you know, we're listening to player feedback. When we're thinking about all these experiments, whether that's Season of Discovery or Plunderstorm or now WoW Remix, like, we're coming up on our 20th anniversary as World of Warcraft, and we're looking to, you know, surprise players and try new things and see what lands. And so if players really like this idea, if they respond really well and they want to see more, they should give that feedback. And, you know, we're listening, we're reading, we're watching, uh, you know, all the content creators and whatnot, just to, to see what people are responding well to. And we want to make more cool wow for players. So that's my answer for that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Always good to feel the waters and see how how it's received. It's hard to decide before you know. So when creating a time running character, I noticed that players are warned with a pop up on the screen that warns you that this is an advanced way to play. And my question is, what made you decide that MOP Remix should be targeting experienced players? And is there any appeal at all for new players? Yeah, so if you're a brand new player, you're going to see the, hey, this is an advanced way to play because it is taking existing content and it's shaking it up with all new gameplay, really unfamiliar gameplay. Um, and there is time to to learn how to use those systems. So you'll start with just like a couple of gems, a cup, you know, a little bit of power on your cloak. But, you know, as time progresses, it's, it is going to get more uh, involved and in, in, we're principally looking at existing and returning players when we were designing, okay, how do we shake up gameplay? How do we make the the existing content feel new and fresh and, and add new gameplay problems for players to solve and kind of new ways to, to express their character? Um, so that was our first focus. But one of the benefits of starting at level 10 is that if you have a friend who maybe didn't want to level alone, like kind of everyone has that like fresh start feeling. And so we actually do think it's a good opportunity to invite for people to invite their friends to come play with them. And because leveling is so accelerated, you might have multiple characters, you know, for different different groups of friends. Like, I know that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have kind of like different characters depending on where my friends are at. And even if you want to just play one character, everything scales up to level 70. And so you might have like a newer friend that's at lower level. You're still going to get rewards for, for playing with them, you know, no matter what content that they're in, because it all scales to max. It all gives you bronze for, for buying you know, uh, the uh, cosmetics or upgrading your gear or getting new spell gems. Um, and so like in that way, it's, it's very flexible for kind of uh, different experience levels and different times of play. But yeah, ultimately it's, 
let's shake up the gameplay. Like this is this is a additional layer of kind of cool gameplay choices on top of the existing WoW experience. Yeah, and you can kind of like choose how challenging you want it to be as well. Um, because you have access to things like uh, a raids at level 25, you can decide to hop in at 25 if you want to. Um, but if you imagine that at level 25, you don't have all of your spell kits yet, right? You don't have all your talents and abilities. Um, so you might find that more challenging. Um, and so LFR and normal difficulties will be available um, if you want that challenge. But if you want to just continue um, questing and leveling, you're also um, able to do that too. So you can kind of decide like where you want, um, where you want it to be challenging and um, how you want to approach the whole content. Yeah, our, our basic philosophy is um, the first time something becomes available that for players who are looking for a challenge, that it will push back and there will be kind of like, oh, okay, how do I solve this problem? How do you, when you don't have your big raid cooldowns, how do we do this, this raid boss? Um, but there's also uh, very accessible content out in the world. Uh, and you can absolutely, anything that, that might start challenging, you can just keep getting stronger, keep powering up, get more spell gems, get more uh, power for your cloak, and you're going to be able to overpower basically anything. Um, and that includes Mythic Garrosh at the very end. Mythic Garrosh does sort of expect that you'll have powered up your gear even more, but for any player type, if they just want to upgrade past it, if they want to just get, like, get overpowered, that's a big point of this event. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I, I was surprised to see that warning myself, uh, but I thought it was interesting to uh, specify that because it does make people like me who are experienced feel like, oh, this is definitely for me. Like, that's that's cool. It's a good point you made as well. New friends can always just uh, tag along as well if it's too much. And uh, like CG mentioned as well, like you don't have to do the raids. You could do the other stuff. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Since we are talking about Mist of Pandaria, I told you guys the expansion was, you know, it's very important to me as a Mistwalker myself as well. I have to ask, how come no challenge modes? Yeah, so whenever we make anything, we have to decide, okay, what are we going to focus on? Like, what do we think is the best mixture of the features and content? And so, like you know, like I've been alluding to, the, the features are very much about becoming overpowered and growing in power and, and getting stronger and stronger. Whereas the original stick with challenge modes was having a fixed power level and like mastering a time challenge. And so when we look at like, what is the right uh, thing to focus on? You know, challenge modes are super cool, but they don't really fit the like infinite power uh, fantasy that, that we're offering players with WoW Remix. And, and that's why we didn't decide to focus on that. Okay, okay, yeah, that, that's fair enough. So challenge modes would not allow you guys to go crazy with it, in essence. Well, they wouldn't be challenge modes anymore. They'd be something different. And so if, if yeah. for players who, who really like challenging dungeon content, heroic dungeons at early levels, especially, are quite difficult. You, you know, if people are okay. level 10 and they get right out of the intro and mm -hmm. they queue up for heroic, I think they're going to be surprised. Now, once they have like all their gem slots filled at like level 16 or 17, then it starts to be like, okay, this is tough, but you know, only tough, not like, whoa, that's really hard. Uh, and yeah. and feeling that power growth, you know, even for players who really like something that's challenging, feeling that power growth, I think is going to be really satisfying. You know, we saw a lot of really positive reception from PTR. And so really excited to see people jump in and try it. One of the things that you get is like um, early on, you get, you know, you get gear that has the, the gem slots so that you can fill them with Thinker uh, gems and cog, cogwheel gems and such. Um, but then as you level up, um, sometimes you'll get pieces of gear that'll give you more slots, like two or three gems. So you can then have like uh, a combination of three different Tinker gems in one slot. And all those things can like proc off of each other and just cause like, you know, massive mayhem. You can have a bunch of like uh, fire and ice spells. Um, lightning spells, um, any kind of like wild combination that you can think of. And so it's like, it's really um, infinite the amount of like stuff that you can do and like the, the power gain that you get, like as you ramp up in levels. I'm actually really excited. You talking about it makes me like, just want to jump into it right now. Have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> exciting. Well, on the topic of challenge modes, I do have to ask, a lot of people are wondering as well, the challenge mode rewards, very popular from back then. Was there any consideration at all to bring them back? Um, maybe even as a recolored version of them? So we decided not to um, uh, focus on any of the feat of strength related rewards. And instead we have like a ton of other rewards available. I think everyone's been really excited yeah. about all the new mounts and all the uh, new transmog and having a different way of getting some of the rare drops that are still in the game. And so there are basically like three kinds of rewards that, that we have. There's the brand new art, which should be like 
really easy for anyone to get. And that's the stuff that comes from the achievements. And so players will be able to kind of choose uh, how they want to complete each one of those meta achievements. And they're kind of based on each zone. If you like group content or solo content or repeatable content, like you have a lot of flexibility. Like you don't have to do everything to get all those new cosmetics. And then we have all the unreleased variations. And those, they'll take a little bit longer, but, you know, very reasonable to get if you're playing actively, you know, in way less than the three months that the event is going to be active. And then finally, if, if players are having a ton of fun playing Remix, we wanted to make sure that there's always like something that they could be earning. And that's actually why we decided to make things like the Tusks of Manoroth or the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent, having another route available because like those aren't going anywhere so people you know don't get all those during remix uh they could still get uh those rewards you know after remix ends even if they don't get it during remix it's really important to us that players feel like hey i you know i can get all the things that i want to get and so we wanted to focus on stuff that that was reasonable to get quickly and and wasn't going anywhere because we wanted to be really generous um and, and i think a lot of players have noted that you can play on one character and unlock uh, cosmetics for all the different classes. Like we we made it so you know it's it's kind of uh, a preview for you know the more uh, robust version coming in uh, the War Within. But if you're playing on a mage and you want to earn Warrior Transmog, you can do that. And we do have some class specific sets, the secondary colors from the trading post. Uh, you know, and even for evokers and demon hunters, which didn't have challenge uh, mode sets, so there are some class specific transmog that players can earn, and they can if they want to play each class or just play one class. It's really up to, well, up to them. And for the um, for the rewards, we also added like a Pandaria Remix tag on the items that are new and exclusive to the event. So if you have been around and playing MOP, you'll see that tag on things. So then you can kind of pick and choose like, is this something that I want to go back and farm like later after the event is over because I know it's already you know in existing uh, Mist of Pandaria, or is this exclusive to the event and I really want to like focus on getting this um, getting this like right away so that I don't miss out on that opportunity. That's actually a neat feature. That's good to know. All right, next up, let's uh, talk about rating. I wanted to ask what the final raid sizes are going to be. Normal difficulty looked to be flex scaling and I was wondering about heroic if that's the same or if, or if it's different. Yeah so uh, we are going to have the LFR for all five raids and then we'll have the 10 person um, normal and heroic for Mogashan Vaults, for Heart of Fear, for Terrace of Endless Spring, and for Throne of Thunder. And then Siege of Orgrimmar is going to use the like modern uh, style raids with, with LFR, Flex, Normal, and Heroic, and then 20 Mythic. So those are going to be all the raid sizes. You'll note that the sizes that are not a part of WoW Remix are the 25 person Normal and Heroic on those four first raids, but everything else should be there. Okay, cool. I didn't realize that there was going to be a Mythic version as well. Yeah, and, and just it's daily lockouts as well. And LFR has no lockout whatsoever. Well, on the topic of raids, I was wondering about difficulty. The highest difficulty, are you guys aiming it to be as difficult as they were originally or different? So LFR should be a nice, easy experience, a, a good like kind of romp through those raids. Uh, for normal, if you do normal while you're leveling, um, there'll probably be somewhere between like normal and heroic, like modern raids. So you have to do the mechanics right, but it's not going to be like a, a, a really hard gear check or you don't have to like optimize your raid comp, but you do have to do the mechanics and, and Miss of Pandaria raids have some, you know, some mechanics that people haven't seen for a while. So it'll be a fun experience to learn as far as heroic raids are concerned. Um, and this is stuff that the no player players didn't get to see the final tuning during the PTR, but they will start quite challenging knowing that players can just keep getting their cloaks stronger they can come up with combinations of gems that not even we have discovered yet to like become really overpowered and keep upgrading their gear and so if you right when you ding 70 if you try to you know jump into mythic garage you're like well okay that's billions of health maybe i should build up a little more maybe i should do those earlier raids um but yeah and that's you know that having that feeling of progression like we thought was important and so uh the raid mechanics are there they are still the mechanics and for some of them especially like dark animus really important that you do that that boss um you know as intended but um so yeah that's that's the thing that was missing from ptr is is kind of like oh that having that progression but you can always get stronger and if you really want really want the rewards that come you know like uh garrosh is going to have the bones of manoroth which you need to get the tusks of manoroth and all the garrosh heirlooms uh you could absolutely just keep upgrading your gear and get like and then overpower it Gotcha. 
Considering the normal raid skill from level 25 onwards, uh, I was wondering if they would become soloable at max level or if they just keep scaling. We, we anticipate that you'll be able to solo some things. Like you can go in and solo the scenarios, dungeons. Um, as far as soloing raids, I think that's going to depend on on players, right? Like I'm not sure if people are going to um, want to take on that challenge. Maybe not solo, maybe small groups, uh, smaller groups than, than cap. Um, but we're definitely interested to see if people are going to take on that challenge because we want to see, like we'll be along watching with the community, seeing if people can solo them. Um, but yeah, that's just going to be up to um, how, how uncapped players get, right? <laughs> Yeah, and after level 70, there's no more scaling in raids. So, like, they do have a fixed power level after players hit level 70. Mm -hmm. But they, they do scale to 70, so... Yes, yeah, 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 everything forward, scales to 70. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. This concept of level up raiding, is that something that we might see adapted into the regular game in the future? So nothing to announce uh, here. You know, players have seemed to really enjoy level up raids for Season of Discovery and WoW Remix. We think it's a cool idea, but, you know, nothing to announce. Gotcha. All right, moving on from raids, I'd like to throw in a question for the PvPers out there. I know some of you guys still exist. Uh, <laughs> after the successful Plunderstorm PvP event, which I really enjoyed, by the way, uh, it's clear this event is taking a different turn and focusing on a more traditional PvE World of Warcraft experience. I was wondering, is there a reason that no form at all of PvP, Battlegrounds, Arena, Skirmishes, seem to be toggled on for this? So really glad that you enjoyed Planner Storm. And when we were thinking about the different kind of experimental uh, modes that we were going to do, we really did want to, you know, have something for all different player types. And so obviously Planner Storm was more, more PvP focused, and while while Remix is more PvE focused. This is a similar answer to you know why we didn't end up thinking that challenge modes were the right fit. Players are going to become really overpowered. You know, tanks are going to feel like you know really almost unkillable people are gonna be able to like stun lock creatures and and huge burst damage and ultimately like that kind of wild west uh you know wacky power environment didn't feel right for sort of like competitive pvp so players can absolutely do they can still flag themselves they can still like okay i want to go like who else wants to punch me or they can duel if they want to but but ultimately like the game is not tuned around that at all it's tuned around like getting overpowered and fighting monsters uh, in the outdoor world and in raids. And so that's why we decided like PvP isn't necessarily the right fit for WoW Remix. Yeah, that's fair enough. It, it would be crazy. It would be crazy. I have a bit of a big question here. So overall, <laughs> considering Plunderstorm, Season of Discovery, and now also MOP Remix, all with their unique approach of the game, do you see a future where Blizzard would allow players to build their own custom games using the World of Warcraft assets, similar to how it was done in Warcraft 3. So nothing to announce on that front. We're going to keep experimenting. We're going to see, keep seeing what players like. And uh, yeah, but nothing to announce there. Oh, <laughs> I was wishful thinking like, yeah, you know, why not? <laughs> Throwing it out there right now. Are there any new challenges or events introduced in MOP Remix that players haven't encountered in the original expansion? Um, there's some new stuff that's been added, like there's um, the intro quest line where we've got um, Eternus kind of explaining like why you're here. Um, and then, so after you complete the intro quests, you then go, uh, there's also the, <clears throat> excuse me, the dragon riding tutorial. Um, so those are some new quests, as well as in the bazaar, there is um, a handful of NPCs that give out dailies to go complete like scenarios, dungeons, raids. Um, but largely the experience is going to be the same as it was through Mr. Pandaria. All the zones are available, uh, the patch content's all there. Um, there's nothing that's time gated or locked by um, anything except your level. So once you like level up through things, you'll just be able to unlock different parts of uh, the of Pandaria as you um, like, and you can skip around and go to like wherever you want um, as you hit those like level caps that unlock things. Yeah, when we were adding all the new gameplay options, like that makes the content feel like feel very different. You know, playing with a dragon fight class versus a Mr. Pandaria class, like it's just already different and now everything scales so we focused uh, mainly on kind of existing content with new new game plan systems makes sense some uh, quick final rapid fire questions will our characters have the regular boosted gear when coming out of mop remix into retail 
So after the character conversion, depending on what level that your character earned, it's not based on their item level, it's based on the character level. That'll decide like after the conversion, what gear they get. So if you're level 50, you'll have level 50 gear. If you're level 70, you'll come out with items that are in the 400s. So they're not going to outshine the season four Dragonflight gear, but they'll be very good for leveling in the War Within. Um, and yeah, so you could like get a whole bunch of 70s and they'll all be really, you know, ready to dive, dive into the War Within after the event. And this happens after the event has concluded, right? Yes, the character conversion will happen after the event ends, happens all at once. Gotcha. For players who might miss the event, can they expect a return for it in the future? So we wanted to make sure that there was, the event was up for a ton, you know, uh, a lot of time, you know, almost three months. Um, so there's lots of time to engage. Now, if, if players can't uh, make it during that three months, if, if they're away or whatever happens, we're going to be listening to player feedback, but like, how did players respond? You know, we're always looking to add more cool content to, to, and now we're experimenting, you know, with our 20th anniversary coming up, we're, we're experimenting, we're trying things. Um, I can't make uh, any announcements about the plans to, to bring anything back. Um, but players should absolutely give us our feedback and we'll be listening. Yeah, and there's also a lot of the um, the achievements, you know, like if you're interested in some of the new stuff, like Brian mentioned earlier, like the achievements have some of the new art. There's like this uh, super cute, like a um, baby yak pet that's adorable. There's a chicken um, transmog for your backpack. Um, all those really cool things are all attached to achievements that are that should be fairly accessible. So if you don't have a lot of time and you still want to participate and get those things, like you can target just doing those achievements and knocking that out if you want to get that cool, those cool new pieces of art. My, my final question then. So if I did my research correctly, the event concludes on August 20th. And I have to ask, does this date hold any special significance about what might come next for World of Warcraft? Uh, so nothing to announce about any kind of dates for Pre-Patch or Within. Um, but yes, the event goes through August. Um, and you know we want to make sure that there's plenty of time for people to jump in, play, get all the rewards they want, play all the content they want, and then leave happy and not feel like they that they felt rushed. And that was super important to us, and that's why it's going for as long as it is. Yeah, thank you, actually, because three months is a really nice time, and uh, it's also across the summer where a lot of people have holidays. So, thank you. All right. Well, that was all my questions. Thank you both so much, Brian and CG. Been great meeting you guys. And thank you for taking the time to answer all the questions. And uh, I'm really excited for MOP Remix. Thank you for doing everything that you guys do. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, thank Very you nice so to much. meet you as well. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you.